Naruto, another one of those more intermediate difficulty characters we've been exploring in the Persona Arena series lately. Here we're looking at a character with a moveset that doesn't immediately paint a clear picture of how to be effective. Are we zoning? Are we playing adaptively? Are we rushing down? It's a bit of everything. The best summary I can give, Naruto rewards a particularly patient and deliberate player. You have to use traps, conventional zoning projectiles, range strikes, variable close range pressure, and a bit of calculated risk in balancing your meter between defensive and offensive options in order to succeed. Naruto has two gimmicks to be aware of, limited ammo on their gun that needs to reload over time when you run out, and a fate meter on the opponent that can unlock an alternative win condition of instant kills off of regular super attacks in any round. If you execute the game plan correctly, you can turn a grab on a mostly healthy opponent into a total match win. Playing Naoto, there's a lot going on in your favor, especially against low to mid-level opponents. The various status effects that you can pull out, like Silence and Fear, are some of the strongest and most matchup altering in the game. While the game plan requires all aspects to work in harmony, you can afford to lean off of specific elements in certain matchups. If you need to deny an Akihiko player the room to pressure you, for example, it's not a total disaster to shy away from taking risky close range confrontations and choosing to bully them from afar for most of the matchup. And of course, the fate meter enabling instant kills gives an ever looming threat over the opponent's neck. Check out footage from a good Naoto player sometime and you'll see a common scenario is a first round win with a heavily depleted fate meter leading into a second round wipe with an instant kill for the match. Sadly, Naoto is balanced out with a tiny health pool. If you take too many risks and eat two or three counter hit combos, you're dead. And the defensive options are much worse than most of the other characters. And not entirely a con, but more of a limitation that has to be worked around to succeed. Like I said, there's a lot going on here that you have to juggle. There's the ammo resources that need to be top of mind at all times, and you also have to ration out how you spend your meter. Do you go all out with this combo to reduce their fate meter and set up an instant kill? Or do you conserve a bit to have more defensive options at your disposal and be a bit safer? I'll be giving a brief overview on the important attacks, but as always, please read the write-ups on dustloop.com for full frame data and other information. You have a pretty standard set of basics with decent frame data. The second hit of the auto combo is one of those nifty mid-chain lows that lets you get multiple low hits in a pressure chain with your crouching A. Stand B is a good mid-range poking tool due to its advanced movement. And Crouch B is an anti-air that's a bit mediocre hitbox wise, but can be jump cancelled on block giving it a bit of versatility. Jumping A is another standout due to its incredible versatility as well, with Jumping B right behind it as another good tool. Naoto's Persona Normals give you some good range pokes in addition to serving as favorable combo starters and punishes. The grounded D attacks are pretty novel in that your Persona disappears and strikes when you press D again. The Air Persona Normals have phenomenal utility just like the A and B air attacks, Really above average normals across the board, save for having no 5 frame move outside of throw, which can be pretty detrimental on defense. For the special attacks, we have DP Shield of Justice with neutral forward and backward follow-ups, quarter circle AB double fangs, quarter circle back AB aim that leads into A, B, C, or D versions of snipe, quarter circle forward C and D for blight, and quarter circle back C and D for Megiddo. If you've seen previous guides, y'all should know about how counter DPs work by now. They're like regular DPs, but worse. Naruto's gives you different options for follow up after the counter though, so it helps a bit to cover for the pitfalls of having a counter DP. Just with the requirement that you make the correct read, guess, or reaction. Double Fangs is mostly for combos, so keep it to that starting out. Aim Stance is really deep, so even if you don't want to get into the weeds of all the attacks, read up on the specifics on Dust Loop for this, please. This is how you get all of your shots off and it is integral to your game plan to understand most of the particulars of this move. Once you're in aim stance, different buttons give your bullets different trajectories and properties. The final shot of the clip is always a powered up version of whatever shot type you chose. A is a straight shot, B is a ricochet that aims downward and hits low on the way down, C hits airborne opponents, and D cancels the stance immediately. And if you have any experience with stance cancels, you can imagine how this adds a layer of complexity to maximizing Naoto's tools. I can't overstate how important this stance is, but I also can't do it justice in this introductory format. So to keep it simple, I think learning combos that utilize the aim stance and the various shot types will go a long way in helping you internalize the shot properties and apply them to the neutral game. It's a lot to take in at once, so I recommend you slowly integrate the deeper stuff like enhanced bullets over time. For now, treat it like Mega Man. You're just shooting people and aiming either straight down or up, whichever way their body is. Blight is cool as an anti-air, 
better than your crouch B, kind of, but it requires a higher level of reaction so you have to perform a motion in response to the jump in as opposed to just down and B. And your Megiddo Trap is the other major component to your zoning. Finding the spaces to continually set up these within the flow of fights is the main challenge in playing this type of character. A master Naoto can completely fluster people by preventing them from freely moving around the screen and deny them the chance to run their offense. For the supers we got double quarter circle A, B, anti S, S, P pistol, double quarter circle C and D for Hamon and Mudun, and the awakened double quarter circle back A, B for the raid super. SP pistol silences the opponent so it's one of those exceptions to the rule of not using super if it doesn't kill or get a hard knockdown. And you don't really mind it since you get to set up your full screen nuisance gameplay anyway. Hamon and Mudun though are those alternative win conditions we talked about. If you get them down to zero fate meter, instant kill. Hamon has more uses than Mudun but Mudun is air unblockable which is worth remembering if you ever want to make the other player hate Naoto even more. Raid, the awakened super has its uses. Your best invincibility frames are on this, so that's worth noting. All of these skills take different amounts off of the fate meter. If you use multiple fate altering moves in a single combo, only the first one takes off the full amount of fate bar, and all subsequent moves after that first one only take one off of the fate meter, unless it's an enhanced skill. After every round, they get half of their fate gauge back, unless you instant kill them, in which case it's reset to full. So Naoto's cool because unlike most characters we don't always need to emphasize getting a hard knockdown while still in their face since we want to set up traps and zone with our projectiles a little bit, as well as biding time to refill our gun. So this is the recommended easy starter combo, you can hit this off of pretty much any starting attack. The next combo is good for when you don't have bullets ready to use or if you want to keep close range pressure. You can set a trap after this combo or you can go into other pressure options. With bullets at the ready, you can combo into the ricochet bullets instead of the stance cancel while still getting a decent pressure opportunity afterwards. And the better mid screen confirmed that you want to practice is this one. It's tough to figure out at first, you just need to drill down the bullet sequence and do it really quickly. Four A shots and then a C shot so that they bounce back to you for the pickup with the auto combo. The stance cancel is pretty key here. There's a very clear window to cancel the aim stance after the powered C shot that you need to get used to. I advise you to not rush this link or you're gonna drop it. Try to get into a rhythm of clean inputs and catch them with the auto combo right as they are about to drop to the ground to make sure that you hit the rest of the combo. Now we'll carry this stance cancel into our corner routing. We're linking into a standing C which has quite a bit more startup than the stand A so you're gonna have to keep things tight here. And then finish with the B ricochet shots. Pretty easy. And for the last starter combo, Here's a counter hit confirmed that you're going to want to work into your game. Counter hit C gives you enough time to charge a crouching C and then route into the mid screen combo you just practiced. For all these combos you have a lot of room to get creative with when adding supers to them. So just try stuff out to figure out how to combo the different supers that you have. I'm not going to hold your hand too much in that aspect. Like I alluded to earlier, our game plan is patience. You want to start every match with area denial. By forcing the opponent to play where we want them to play, we dictate their playstyle. Enforce the pressure of having the opponent finding an answer for themselves. And whatever risk they take to get to you, that's when you have your counter attack ready. So in neutral, we have our traps. Get good at smartly placing your Megiddo traps in areas that offer the best resistance to what your specific matchup is trying to accomplish. Are they approaching primarily from the air with very large buttons? Then limit that as well as you can. And you have to really make them understand the penalty for trying to bulldoze through the traps. Don't let people continuously run down and ignore the traps as they try to get in. Give resistance. Show them what it's like to eat a mix up off of them just blindly running forward and blocking. When it comes to the gunshots, it's tricky. They're good projectiles but you also want to have them handy for combos. But they also cover angles you might desperately need to stifle in certain matchups. So I'd say don't lean too heavily on using this as a zoning tool completely. Make sure you balance it out with your other moves and not just using it at your first opportunity every time that you full screen from the opponent. If you're not used to zoning characters, make sure to remember to treat your projectiles as limbs sometimes. The same way you confirm into a combo off of a stand B, crouch B hitting, you can confirm off of gunshots, so keep that in mind. And you also have your persona moves in the mid range to top everything off nicely. They're pretty versatile and complement the patient approach of letting your opponent make mistakes 
and then hanging them for it. But what about people that don't make mistakes? Or at least people that also play patiently and make less mistakes? Simple answer. Set up your traps for free and take them up on the offer of free pressure. Get in there with powerful tools like Jump C and run your offense. Naoto doesn't have anything particularly fancy, but you know, just throw in some staggers, tick throws, dash cancels, try to catch them off guard and open them up, combo, and then set up more traps along with your knockdown pressure. It's here that we get into the critical juncture. Do you focus on getting the instant kill? It's fun and it's absolutely viable to make that your objective. But you will get the most mileage out of this character by thinking of it only as a possible outcome and not something that you should go out of your way to focus on no matter what. Play within the flow of the match. Did you get a lot of hits off of them running face first into traps and gunshots? Then yeah, try to get the instant kill. But if you have the opportunity to spend meter on outright damage, don't hold back just to get an instant kill afterward that isn't always guaranteed. Defensive wise, holding back is the absolute last position that you want to find yourself in with this character. Your best defense with Naoto is to keep blocking to a minimum. Your poor defensive options force you into needing to use your meter for system escapes or your awakened raid super if you want any clean escapes. And that means less meter to secure your victory with. Opponents will get to do very nasty stuff against you since you lack a regular DP, so try your best to not get tagged and put into any block strings at all. Hopefully these tips helped you out, have fun, and see you next time.